Hello, everyone. This is News Now from the Belmont Journal, and we're joined by Joanna Jubilus of the Belmont Citizen Herald for our regular weekly update on the news. And I'm your host, Mike Crowley. So it's good to see you, Joanna. Thank you, Mike. Good to see you, too. We have a lot to talk about today. All right. With um, uh, segment B of town meeting coming up, uh, the town's replacement fuel tanks continue to generate a lot of controversy and the price tag has increased dramatically um, with town meeting being asked to provide additional funds from the enterprise, the town's enterprise funds. What can you tell us about that? Okay, so this is article 19 that's gonna come before town meeting. So most likely um, the second night of town meeting, I believe. And that that will be, uh, I think, I don't have the date in front of me, maybe you do, but it's it's the second night of town meeting. Town meeting starts uh, June 2nd, I believe. That's right. And so so the second, the second night, night of, of, of town meeting, will, yeah, right, June it would 7th. be the, the Monday following. Right. Okay. What, what a lot of town meeting members will be learning between now and June 7th is that um, in Article 19, they're being asked to approve 150,000 from the sewer enterprise fund and 150,000 from the water enterprise fund for a total of 300,000 to go toward a project that they actually approved funding for last year. So this project is to replace the underground fuel tanks in the DPW yard with two above ground fuel tanks, 6,000 gallons each, one for diesel, one for fuel. And last year, last May, town meeting approved 540,000 for the project. That's what the estimate was supposed to be. But between last year and now, the estimate actually went up, it has gone up to about a million 30 for this project. It's doubled in the cost. And as a result, capital budget was faced with another 500,000 that they needed to find to get this project off the ground. And the reason this project needs to get done, Mike, is because the town's insurance company won't insure these underground tanks anymore. They said they're, 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 just, they're just not um, going to insure them anymore. So the town really feels they have no choice. However, a lot of people who are against spending these additional funds are asking, why can't the town see if there's another insurance company that will insure these tanks? If that's what the issue is, try to find another insurance company. And that's what Jay Marcotte, our DPW director, is in the process of doing. He's trying to see if another insurance company, if he can buy time so that another insurance company can insure the tanks that we have now before they fail. Because if they fail, it will be very costly to the town. And you know, there's a lot of people who are against the override, who are against spending any additional funds, certainly not 500,000. Now I mentioned it's it's 300,000 that's coming out of enterprise funds. The other 200,000 is coming from Belmont Light. This is ratepayer money. So, you know, someone, uh, for instance, Bill Anderson, who spoke at the select board meeting Monday, he's just a resident. He was one of the no override people. He, he is like, this is my, this is my money you're spending here. It's ratepayer money. And I think I should have a say in how you spend my money. Because if you spend these enterprise funds, Mike, what will happen, could happen, is that rates could go up. As you know, our rates haven't gone up on water and sewer for three years now. But if you spend these enterprise money funds, it could affect rate, the rates and the rates. Uh, Joanna, aren't, aren't there also some people who are questioning the need for the tanks, suggesting that you know we, exactly. we should be looking at electric vehicles? Exactly, that's the other issue. And Mark Palillo is one of those people. Mark Palillo, our, a select board member, is like, aren't we gonna be going electric? And why are we spending this money? And do we really need 6,000 gallons of diesel and 6,000 gallons of gas? So this is going to be very much debated. It'll be interesting to see um, how it passes, but just worth noting, two amendments are being filed on this article because the way it's currently worded, town meeting would have to uh, not approve the entire article. They can't just uh, not approve parts of it. So there's going to be a an amendment to allow town meeting to just say, okay, we approve everything else that you wanna spend the enterprise funds on, but we don't approve this part. So, so yeah. just not the fuel tanks. Right, so you'll see two amendments coming before town meeting for that. So, so like I said, this this could end up being a, a four night town meeting, 
because of these amendments. We'll see what happens. All right. So um, moving on, Joanna, things got a little tense Monday night at the select board meeting. Uh, talking they did. about Talking about the community path. What, yes, what I, was, I was rather surprised to see what happened between select board vice chair Roy Epstein and the chair of the community path project committee, Russ Lino. It was almost like a, a public argument between them because Roy does not did not want to approve spending 200,000 of CPA funds for the um, community, the uh, easements for the community path that they're requesting. This easement is necessary to move the project forward, to move the design forward. And if it doesn't get approved, if they don't get this funding and they don't get this easement for these properties, which abut the path, the design that they're working on, it's 7 Channing Road and 40 Brighton Street are the two properties that they need the easements for. And without that, they can't move the design forward and the, this is, the whole project could be delayed another year. And Russ Lino does not want that to happen. He said they want to get, you know, get this to 100% design. They, they, you know, they're almost at 25. Um, if they don't get these easements, then they can't move forward. And Roy is saying that the properties could be permanently impacted by this, but we don't know for sure until the design is done. Is is basically the argument that Russ is is saying. You know, we don't know for sure how these properties will be impacted, so we really need to spend this money. I'm sure that town meeting will approve this expense. I think the majority will will be for it, but um, it is just worth noting that that this was a very uh, almost heated debate between Russ and Roy, you know, almost emotional in a way. <laughs> so, so just to be clear, uh, the, the other two members of the select board are not raising this issue. This no. is just no. a select board member. Right. All right. So um, the select board also was supposed to vote on repainting Concord Avenue on Monday, but things are going back to the drawing board. Tell us why. Wow, that was another, I mean, did I mention that the select board meeting went until almost midnight on Monday? And you, you did not. All these very heavily debated things. And this was toward the end. So the transportation advisory committee had a, a plan that they wanted the select board to approve, but before the select board could approve it, and this was for striping, basically painting on Concord Avenue for bike lanes so that kids could get safely to the new Belmont Middle and High School. But what, what happened is um, TAC approved it and then it was gonna go to select board to approve it. But between those two meetings, a lot of people sent Glenn Clancy, our director of community development, a lot of, there was a lot of opposition to this plan. And one of the concerns brought up is uh, parking. It would take away a lot of on-street parking. And the other concern is, is the safety just, so they really have to go back to the drawing board on this. So, so let me ask you, Joanna, how much of the on-street parking, um, and, and I assume this is this is the Belmont Center area, um, how, how much is impacted? I'm not quite sure of the exact number of spaces. I don't have that figure in front of me. Um, but I think it was significant enough that enough people were against it. And um, what's gonna happen is on June 1st, the TAC will basically go back to the drawing board on this. They have to have get something done before the start of school in the fall because 9th through 12th is, is starting in the new building and they do need, they, they wanna encourage biking. They wanna encourage walking, less traffic, less vehicles on the road. So they have to do something. It's just something that's not going to um, be so much opposed to like this was. And, um, and there's not a lot of time to, to get this right before we, we, we get into the opening of school in the fall. Yes, but, but June 1st will be the next meeting. So we'll see what happens and, and what they decide. I couldn't get any more information. I even wanted to know how many letters of, of opposition they got uh, or emails, and, and I didn't get that. Um, I would, thought that would be interesting to know because it ha obviously was enough to say we can't we can't vote on this right now. We have to go back to the drawing board. Okay, um, Joanna, it looks like Belmont could be getting its first recreational marijuana shop as early as October. Can can you tell us the status of that? Sure. So planning board um, had a hearing with Calver Day. Calver Day is one of the two applicants 
for to open recreational marijuana shops on Pleasant Street. The other is Mint. But Calvarde is ahead in the process and they had their first hearing with the planning board. Then they'll have another hearing on June 1st. And I think that'll be it for them. Um, they basically are requesting two special permits for signage. They need signage. Um, and what we learned is that um, they are planned to open in October. That's their plan. That's their goal. If they get all the uh, approvals that they need. And this is um, a Winchester couple that owns okay. and is opening it. And it's their first. And I think it'll, yeah. All right. Well, we'll have to see what happens. 1010 Pleasant Street. Okay. Um, I will remember that address. Let's talk briefly about graduation events for Belmont High School seniors, Joanna. Well, what a difference a year makes, Mike. That's all I can say. Class of 2021, despite the fact that they missed most of their school year in person, they are getting in-person live events to celebrate their graduation. They just had a prom at sea aboard the Odyssey ship. There was about 217 kids that went and I got so many photos that were sent to me and it's nice to see that they're not wearing masks in these photos, they were outdoors. It was just really nice to see that. And um, I even saw some video of Mr. Taylor dancing on the ship and <laughs> it was nice to see as well. Um, May 28th, which is coming up this, this Friday, there's going to be an award ceremony for graduating seniors outdoors under a tent, a special event tent. On June 4th, there'll be a barbecue instead of the all night party that, that is normally planned inside the building. They're doing an outdoor barbecue to celebrate the seniors. And that's the night before the graduation date, which will be June 5th. Also live, they plan to do a procession from Clay Pit Pond to Harris Field. And I, I'm not sure yet, I'm still trying to find out, will masks be required? I believe they will be. But what I wanna find out is, will they limit how many guests graduates can have? Because I know that Watertown is not limiting how many guests. However, Watertown is requiring every graduating student to uh, have a, a test, a COVID test before they graduate. They're all required to get that done. And the school's providing those tests. All right. Well, we'll have to see what happens. What Belmont's doing yet. I, as you know, I covered the two towns and, and it's interesting to see how each town does things similarly, but also differently. All right. Well, thank you so much, Joanna. We'll, talk with, we'll talk with you again next time. You You're can welcome. find more news from the Belmont Citizen Herald at belmont.wickedlocal.com. You've been watching the Belmont Journal's News Now. I'm Mike Crowley, and I will see you next time.